All right, our next question I'm going to ask of Tom and Mark, and that is, what is needed in uh, Sonoma County for companies to foster innovation? Mark, you want to go first? Uh, to, to foster innovation, well, you know, I, I don't think the county can do anything to foster innovation other than streamline the process or, or make a, a climate that encourages businesses to want to be here. I mean, I... I, I I guess as I'm getting older, I'm getting more conservative, which is frightening to me. But, uh, you know, I, I've, I've come of the mindset over the past handful of years that government can't create jobs. In fact, they don't create jobs or they don't do them well. And uh, what they can do is create a friendly atmosphere or an atmosphere that, that where they can have their cake and eat it too, where they could encourage businesses to be here and, uh, and want to thrive. Uh, you know, a couple good examples I want to bring up about you know, poor government businesses uh, in action is uh, you know, U.S. Postal Service versus the UPS. There is zero reason why we should continue to fund the U.S. Postal Service. It's a horrible business. It's never made money. Uh, Amtrak versus just about any private transportation form out there would be a, a public and private uh, comp. And uh, registering your car at the DMV versus registering your computer at Apple. So I, I think that we should abandon this idea of government-created jobs and look at the idea of creating a, a, an atmosphere uh, that, uh, that, that encourages and, and wants uh, businesses to be here. And that boils down to customer service. I mean, one of the things I, I was, uh, I use my, my father a lot in speeches I give around the world about, you know, how I learned not to grow a business from watching him. But one of the areas that I learned how to grow a business was he excelled at customer service. I mean, customer service was, a, was a paramount to his success. And, and I adopted many of those characteristics in the building of my businesses. Uh, and customer service at the, ca at, at the government level is non-existent. And, and whether or not Sonoma County understands it, they are a business. And they are a business that has a customer base of businesses that are coming here and people that are paying permitting fees and people that are paying taxes. And what level of customer service do you receive? Uh, I think it would be important for e you know, each one of us in this room to go try to start a mock business in the county and, and go through the process to open that business uh, through the permitting process and gauge the level of customer service you receive. You know, as, a, as a business, I want to impart on my customers that I appreciate that they have chosen me to do business with. I want to increase my level of service, and I want them to have a pleasurable experience. And I think that while everybody in this room completely understands that concept, again, I think he, he hit the nail on the head earlier when he said it comes down to the counter service. If the counter service doesn't get it, it is not going to work. And so this, you know, the, the fact that we're up here in our, you know, ivory towers and we all understand these concepts is wonderful, but we need to impart it down to the ground level and have the, the, the person who's actually receiving the check and filling out the paperwork to give that level of customer service that makes you want to come back for more. Thank you. And Tom, your perspective on the question? Uh, for me, innovation is a byproduct of entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship if you were the big company. If there's a problem to be solved and you have unique, solution, unique solutions through some innovation, it's responding to the need is where the innovation comes from. For uh, creating jobs around here and, and encouraging growth and startup companies, uh, there have to be manageable risk associated with licensing, regulation, healthcare costs, and so on for people to take that risk. Uh, big companies have a lot of cash these days, but they're not spending it because they're having trouble defining the risk of adding employees. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal that talked about a business in New Jersey. He did analysis and said every employee he added deducted from his income because of the overhead burden that came with it. So uh, innovation, I think, is, 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 is the tool for making things happen. All right, thank you. Can, can I answer the question? <laughs> well, Al. I'll let you answer the question, but be brief because we want to get to the other questions. I, I think one of the most important things for innovation in the county is to increase the awareness of math and science education in general and specific programs at Sonoma State to increase engineering education, technical education, et cetera. Without the talent pool, you won't have continued innovation and you won't, you won't attract the innovators. It's, it, you can have entrepreneurs, but if you don't have good people to execute it, or you don't have new technologies um, and that kind of brain power locally, 
then you won't have innovation over a long period of time. And I think it's time that we change the attitudes about Sonoma State, that it's not a liberal arts college anymore. I, I know it's a big change for everybody, but I think if we all put our heads together, we need to change the attitude of, of what kind of resource we have in our community. We started engineering programs there uh, out of the Economic Vitality Project, and they need to be supported and continued uh, we, you know, by local support. The local tech companies have all contributed to make those programs happen. We have a wine program that was supported by the Vintners. So I think innovation is all about education. We really need to focus on technical education and uh, not so much liberal arts and some of the other softer subjects. All right, thank you very much. So earlier we heard during the Innovation uh, Council's report about the importance of branding. So the next question, which I'd like Tom to answer first, is how could Sonoma County be branded best for a sustainable economic vitality? Well, I think we all have to be proactive in representing the county is, quote, a business-friendly environment. It has not always had that reputation. That includes our websites. You don't need to drill down three levels to get to the business side of it. All of our messages outbound say this is a place to come and do business. By the way, it's a great place to live, but also there are incentives uh, through the availability of capital or whatever to do business here. Excellent. And Al, what about your perspective on branding? I think branding is um, important. Um, I think the health uh, wellness uh, a mandate uh, and, and objective is, is a, an excellent one for health care. And of course, the Sonoma brand uh, has been active for the last 15 years since the Economic Vitality Project, and I think it works quite well and, and can be expanded. But uh, branding is, is, is essential today, you know, with the likes of social networking and Facebook and, and uh, LinkedIn and, and, and so forth. So uh, branding uh, should be promoted for uh, the clusters. Thank you. So the next question we've already touched on in relationship to regulatory issues, but I'd like to get some specific ideas from each of you. So maybe if you could give me one or two ideas about how to improve the regulatory issues to increase efficiency yet still maintain the standards that we need. So Tom, you have a perspective on that, one or two ideas? I'm not sure I understand the question, but um, As distasteful as it is to read about all the jobs and manufacturing particularly being transferred overseas, they're not coming back. And as we go forward, the skill set to serve that new economy is going to be technology-based, I think. There's going to be high-value-added skills required. I think an issue of the unemployed we have now is a mismatch between skill set and the demands by the jobs that are out there. I think we need to think hard about our universities and um, the, the match between education and the needs of this future economy. Uh, I get a lot of resumes every month from engineers that have been out of work for two years. Their background doesn't necessarily fit what the economy calls for. Mark, what about your ideas on the regulatory issues to make increase efficiency? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, as how many people here are actually elected officials? Okay, well, ninety percent of this room probably. Uh, you, being uh, having the term pro business or or pro business, uh, you know, s making that claim is a, is tricky ground for elected officials to make because it it comes off the impression that I'm pro business, I'm anti citizen, and that's not the case. Or that doesn't have to be the case at all. In fact, you could be pro business to enhance the livelihood or the lifestyle of, of this county. Um, so I think that we need to change the way we, we send that message. We have to be pro-business. I mean, we are a business and we need money to grow. I, I, I live in a, in a town that, that, that claims it's very progressive, but uh, the progress resembles a lot of the, the, the politics I see when I'm in Nicaragua, which is absolutely have zero growth and do nothing and expect the problems to fix themselves. And it doesn't work that way. You need to increase your income to fix your roads, to fix your potholes and all that stuff. And that's not progress. That is actually being quite conservative. But 
The other idea that I have that I think would really stick, and I do it a lot in my industry right now, is the idea of a CEO swap. I'm a, I'm a big believer in public-private partnerships, and I think that we miss a lot of opportunities by not taking advantage of that relationship much more often than we do. And I think that we as, as business owners make a lot of inaccurate assumptions about government agencies and regulatory agencies, and I think the, the uh, converse is true. And I think it would be an interesting experiment to have uh, regulatory heads come and run our companies for a short period of time to understand that you can actually increase efficiency. I mean, we, ex we explore these ideas all the time. These businesses could not survive if they're not constantly looking at ways to increase efficiency and maintain or even improve their standards. Uh, we can do both, and we are constantly exploring that. We have hundreds of answers to that question. And I think the converse is true. I think that we need to go in and work in a regulatory agency for a while as kind of a, a, a mock CEO for a while and see the, 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 the nightmarish myriad that these people have to navigate every day to simply do their jobs. And I think the outcome of that exercise would allow us to fix a lot of the problems that we see. Another good idea to add to our uh, discussion later at our table groups. Al? Yeah, I, th I think the uh, <coughs> regulatory issue is, is about, uh, one, streamlining the issue, having an ombudsman to take a company through the process, particularly a major corporation coming to the area. Uh, for small business, I think there ought to be financed uh, use startup costs and so forth, use permits. In Santa Rosa, for instance, are $2,500. That's exceedingly high for a small business. I think there's a lot of small things, practical things that can be done. But again, it's, it's getting the lofty ideas here down to the counter uh, customer service level. Um, but I, I go beyond that. I think that some of the re regulatory issues that are promulgated at the state level and the Fed level need to be mitigated and changed. And I think that's going to take a different approach than just legislative. I think we need to consider, in terms of allocating our resources, not so much for economic development issues that are already being done by the private sector, and spend some of that money on hiring lobbyists. I think a lot of the regulations that come down from the feds in particular are detrimental to our county's long-term growth, such as the tiger salamander, some of the wetlands issues that the Corps of Engineers have uh, taken uh, swales and, and mud puddles and called them wetlands. And a, and a lot of the development issues that are going forward in this county are, are yet to be seen in terms of the results uh, because we have, a, we have a pretty good base of uh, empty space now in office industrial space. But going forward, we're going to need new business parks planned for Sonoma County if we're going to continue to be innovative and attract the kind of industry we want. But that won't happen if we continually have these ridiculous laws that come down from the feds and states and we don't fight. There, some of them are good laws, good intentions, but they need to be dealt with on a detailed basis by professionals to mitigate their negative effects there needs to be, again, cost-benefit analysis applied to the, these promulgation of regulations. Otherwise, they're going to strangle us. And I joked about Texas, but Texas is a good example of where companies go. It's the best economy in the, in the country because of the lack of regulation or more sensible regulation. Thank you very much.